Do we ever get two functions at the same time? Take an x value and boom, there's two functions. In this lesson, you will learn how to graph f of x equals sine x and g of x equals cosine x by mapping values from the unit circle onto the Cartesian plane. You've learned that when you attach a number line to the unit circle lining up 0 with 0 radians and using the same scale, that 2 pi will wrap all the way around the circle. You've learned that the wrapping function takes a real number from that wrapped number line and assigns it to a matching point on the unit circle. Here are some you know. In addition to knowing exact radian values in terms of pi, you are also well acquainted with radians in decimal form. You know that on the unit circle, a reference triangle uses x for the horizontal distance and y for the vertical distance. In addition, you know that y and sine have the same value and that x and cosine have the same value. We will start our lesson by borrowing an idea from the wrapping function. The range of the wrapping function is a set of points x, y on the unit circle. In this lesson, we will define two new functions, x of t and y of t. x of t will assign the x value from the point on the unit circle to the real number t, and y of t will use only the y values. We take the real number t and measure an arc around the unit circle. Because we're using the unit circle, both the arc length and the angle equal t. The wrapping function takes us to the point x, y, which we will rename x of t, y of t. These are our two new functions. Since we are using the unit circle, we can also call x of t cosine of t and y of t sine of t. These two functions use the same domain as the wrapping function, namely all real numbers, but their ranges are real numbers between negative 1 and positive 1 inclusive because these are the values that x and y take on in the unit circle. y of t can be written as f of theta, which equals sine of theta, defined as the y coordinate from the unit circle because t and theta are the same numerically. We will use the unit circle to get the y coordinate that goes with our t or theta value. And then we'll use another Cartesian plane to plot points for our function. When t or theta is 0, the corresponding point on the unit circle is 1, 0. We're going to use the y value 0, so on the graph to the right we plot a point using 0 for theta on the horizontal axis and 0 on the vertical axis for the y value. Continuing to graph more points, let's estimate the angle and the coordinates in the middle of the first quadrant. Theta is pi divided by 4, which is about 8 tenths. And counting the blocks on the unit circle, we can estimate both the x and y coordinates at 7 tenths. Using theta on the horizontal axis again and the y value on the vertical axis, we plot the point 8 tenths comma 7 tenths. Continuing, theta is approximately 1.57 and note that the y coordinate is 1. Next, we estimate 3 fourths pi as 2 and 4 tenths, and the y coordinate as 7 tenths again. Then at pi, we plot pi comma 0, and so on. 3.9 comma negative 0.7, 4.71 comma negative 1, 5.5 comma negative 0.7, and then 6.28 comma 0. This completes one full turn around the circle. Filling in all the points between the ones we graphed, we can sketch a smooth curve. And if we continue around the circle, or if we use negative angles, we will simply repeat the same y values again. Here's a graph generated by a computer for theta or t from about negative 10 to positive 10. Kind of pretty, huh? Let's move on to our second function, which uses the x or cosine values for the range. So this time, when theta is 0, we use the x value of 1, and on the graph to the right, we plot 0, 1. Continuing, we estimate pi divided by 4 with 8 tenths, and the x value as 7 tenths. Then we have 1.57 for the angle, paired with the x coordinate 0. We have 2 and 4 tenths paired with negative 7 tenths, the x value, pi, comma, negative 1. 3.9 comma negative 0.7, 4.71, 0, 5.5 comma positive 0.7, and 6.28 comma 1 again. Here's a computer rendering of the smooth curve connecting our points and extending the graph for t or theta 
from negative 10 to 10. Hmm, looks a lot like the sine function. It's actually the exact same shape, it's just positioned differently. Here they are on the same grid. Now, one more thing. We don't usually use theta or t for the name of the independent variable in a function, so we need to fix that. We normally name the independent variable x, and hence the horizontal axis is usually labeled x. So in this case, we are naming the angle x, not theta. So let's change theta into an x in our sine function. This is a little bit trickier for the cosine function. Not only are we calling the angle x again, but we need to realize that the vertical axis or range is usually called y. The x on the unit circle is not the same x as the x on the graph of our function. This is sometimes a source of confusion for students. We're using x and y on the unit circle in a completely different way than the x and y on our graph. So, to review, let's compare the values on the unit circle to the values on the graph of cosine. We have one set of x and y's to represent points on the unit circle. However, on our function graph, y equals the x value from the unit circle, not the y value on the unit circle. And the x on our graph is equivalent to theta on the unit circle, not the x value on the unit circle. In this lesson, you have learned how to graph f of x equals sine x and g of x equals cosine x by mapping values from the unit circle onto the Cartesian plane.